Hey everybody, welcome back. And this is uh, Flipper, part of the live performance exercises in Module 3. Uh, so before this, there was a whole bunch of articles on uh, ways to think about your interview. Uh, hopefully you'll read those. We are going to be adjusting those as time goes on. And, and you want to picture that a, a loose approximation of doing the problem in a structured way is going to be better than strict adherence to anything that you see inside of those articles. And, and that's actually going to be the case for a lot of software engineering principles going, going forward. Um, the idea that you are able to find information on a topic is kind of uh, balanced against the fact that you'll probably find contradictory statements on those same subjects, which is annoying. But you know, welcome. That's you know, that's why they pay you so much to be a software engineer. Um, so anyway, please follow the instructions carefully. Prepare to record and time. So we are recording, and for a timer, I have my little countdown here. I may or may not do this countdown. I'm not sure yet. Begin the problem. Go to rot thirteen. Um, and deobfuscate the problem. Okay, so here's the obfuscated code down here, and Rot13 is actually a cool website. Um, it gives you a way to rotate. Well, we're not going to go into what Rot13 is at the moment, but if you if you have a chance, it's actually kind of a fun thing to look at. Uh, they also want us to have a replit open, so I'm going to go ahead and open one of those. Scroll on down to the bottom because I don't feel like signing in. Sign for JavaScript. I'm going to adjust the settings to dark and disable code intelligence. Uh, code intelligence just uh, like finishes um, the code for you. Like it suggests, hey, if you mean this, you should probably do that. Um, I leave it off just because that's my preference, but you don't really need to beat yourself up too much if you like having the code intelligence enabled. Uh, the only reason why you might want to uh, leave it disabled is because chances are your interview will be done in something called codestitch.io. It's a rather lightweight website that is similar to Replit in a couple of ways, but dissimilar in a couple of other ways. Um, could give more information about that, but I'm not going to. And, and you want to get used to that idea of there being partial pieces of a solution that you need to sort of assemble on your own and make determinations for yourself. And, and a lot of those, they call them building autonomy situation. So uh, enough haranguing about all of that stuff. Let's go ahead and deobfuscate the code. So to deobfuscate the code, you're gonna copy it, come over to Route 13, Paste it in this above section, and then now here's the problem. Flip every pair of characters in a string. Example, variable input, check how interesting this problem is. It's insanely interesting. Variable output is equal to flip pairs called on the input, console.log of the output, and it just occurred to me this is probably relatively difficult to see. Let's go ahead and put it over here. So I'm going to create a multi-line comment by saying forward slash asterisk, and then another asterisk and a forward slash on a following line. I'm going to paste that in there. Flip every pair of characters on a string. Um, it might not be completely obvious, but what you're doing is you're flipping C and H to get HC. Then you're flipping E and C to get CE. Then you're flipping K and a space to get a space and a K. Um, and it looks like if there is an odd number, we're not going to be flipping the last one. So if we get to the last part and, um, well, if there's an odd number, then we're just not going to flip the last part. That's the kind of thing that you might want to notice, but what we want to notice up front is a couple of things like this. What's the input? Input's a string. The output is also a string. So if the output's a string, the, fun the assertion function I'm going to use is my assert equal function. I'm going to say assert equal actual expected test name if actual and expected are the same. Then we're going to console.log past else. We're going to console.log failed. And oh boy, swing and a miss. Plus our test name. Expected. Expected. Plus the expected value. Not wanting to spell expected right today. Uh, plus the ending quotes, but got opening quotes for actual. In lessons later on, you're going to find out that there's something uh, called template literals, which make what we just did way easier. But being able to do the thing, being able to do things with the basic elements is going to prove useful. And this problem is actually going to be an example of that. Why um, doing things with rather basic implementations, for loops, if statements, simple variable declarations, can often allow you to uh, come up with a simpler solution than if you were using uh, more advanced features. So 
we've got that. Now we're also going to want an actual uh, one, variable actual two, and say variable expected one is going to be equal to mm, this guy right here. And we have a we have a quote in there. So we're going to wrap these in double quotes just because there is a quote inside of the of the string. Uh, expected two variable actual one is going to be equal to um, say variable input one because we need to call the function with something is going to be uh, this check out how insanely interesting sentence. Um, actual one is going to be flip pairs called on input one. And let's get a simpler example going as well. So this one will just be A, B, C, D, E, F. Uh, wait, that's got to be the input two. Variable actual two is equal to flip pairs on input two. Variable expected two is equal to mm, B, A, D, C, F, E. Okay, and then we'll have two calls to assert equal. Assert equal, one is going to be uh, actual two. And I'm doing this backwards. Actual two, expected, or sorry, actual one, expected one, and uh, should flip pairs for large sentence with mixed characters. And assert equal for actual two and expected two. And we'll say should flip pairs for small word um, with only letters. Okay, now there's obviously more that we could do there. We could do all kinds of different tests, but this is one of those situations where all I said is flip every pair of characters in a string. So the assumptions I'm going to clarify with my interviewer right now are, hey, can I assume that the string is going to be something other than an empty string? If they say no, I'll just return an empty string or return whatever they want in the event that the input is an empty string. But by clarifying that up front, I can kind of get the idea like, there's not going to be anything crazy going on in here. You don't have to, to check if the input's uh, an array when it shouldn't have been. You don't have to check you know, any of those edge cases that we had when dealing with objects from module one. We're going to get a string. The string is going to have some characters in it. We're going to go along the string. We're going to flip the pairs of characters. So if that's the case, let's go ahead and get rolling with our function. It's OK to do this before you write the test or after. But flip pairs is going to take a string as an input. Mm, should we call it a string? Let's say input. OK, so now we need to think about how we're actually going to do this. So what I would say is that uh, one thing that you could do, or one thing that you can't do, is you can't tell a string, hey, I want your fifth element to be this instead of this. However, we can do that with an array. The other version, of course, is that we could build a new string. So one is, is that we take the input string, turn it into an array, flip it all around in cases where it needs to be flipped, and then join it back into a string and return it. The other one is where we iterate over the string and we build a new string as we go. So I like the one where we're going to iterate over the string and build a new string as we go. So I'm going to say variable uh, flipped input is equal to an empty string. I'm going to iterate over the string input. But here's the thing. I, I don't necessarily want to look at every character. I want to look at every set of two characters. So what that means is that I'll need to iterate over the string input uh, um, incrementing by two. And so what that's going to do is give me the ability to go from this section, C H, to E C, to K space, all the way to the end. So I'm going to say uh, grab next character, which inside of an iteration just means whatever you're at the iteration, for like I, if we're iterating using a for loop, uh, just do I plus one. That's the next character. So we'll say grab next character, add to flipped, or add to result, we should say. Uh, grab current character, and add to result. So what we're doing is we're going along the string, grabbing every two characters and adding them in reverse order to our, um, what would you call it? 
to our result. Now here's the thing. Once we've done all of that, we'll return our result. But here's here's what we would the only problem with this is that let's say that the next character is not defined. And what I mean by that is that when we go to access the initial string, if we look at the character that is i plus one and we're iterating by two, there is a chance that we'll get to a point where one of these is not defined. So what we'll need to do is uh, check if next character is defined. And so we'll say if it's undefined, grab current character and add to result and then continue or break. Either one of those are going to do the right thing. And break and continue just mean, uh, break means stop the for loop completely, continue means go to the next iteration. But if we're at a point where the next character is undefined, the iteration is going to end subsequently anyway. So let's jump into it. For loop, variable i is equal to zero, i is going to be less than the length of the input, and then i is going to increment by two each time. So we usually do i plus plus, and i plus plus is the same as i plus equals one, which changes i to be what it was plus one. Now we're going to change it to be whatever i was plus two. So we'll wrap this around there. Let's go ahead and jump down here and return flipped input. Check if the next character is undefined. So if input at i plus one, which gives us the next character, is equal to undefined, and that means that we've gotten to the end of the string, then what we're gonna do is, we'll wrap this around there grab current character and add to the result. So we'll say flipped input plus equals input at i, because that's the current character, and, and then break, which will end the for loop. Grab the next character and add to the result. So that's essentially this line right here. We're just gonna do it uh, in order twice. But for this one, rather than being the next character, it's gonna be the, sorry, rather than being the current character, it has to be the next character. So this is what's gonna run under all the normal circumstances. If at the very end, we have an odd number of characters in the input, we're going to have a situation where we need to add input at i to our flipped input, which we did here with this exclamation point. But we don't wanna put undefined on the other side of it, which is what's gonna happen if we try to do this line here. So now that we've done what seemingly like feels like about the right answer, uh, let's look and make sure that everything that should be in place is in place. So flipped input, four variable i is equal to zero, i is less than input dot length. Ah, this is no good. So we need to make sure that the closing section of that is where it should be. Perfect. And flipped input, we've got our assert equal function, we've got our test cases. So now if we see passed for both, we know we've done the problem correctly. Ah, expected two is not defined. So we look, line 52, Jump down to line 52, expected to, and our original error of writing expert instead of expected comes back. So let's run this one. And we're in good shape. So we'll go ahead and copy everything, bring it on back to our uh, submit the deobfuscated code just to see what's gonna happen. It is likely the case that the tests aren't gonna do very much. Let's have a real quick look at the answer again. And you wanna picture that I think that there are solution answers uh, to these. If there aren't, this will serve as the solution. Now that we got that, let's run our tests. It, the student should create and run their own test in a separate replica. Okay, so we did that. Excellent work, everyone. Thanks for watching this video, and we'll see you in the next one.